Okay, so here's the first problem we'll take a look at with this section. We're going to simplify using a product to sum formula, sine 6 theta times sine 4 theta. And here's the, the product to sum formulas uh, that I listed earlier. So uh, in a previous video, I introduced uh, these, uh, what, where they come from, and what, how you can use them. So here's an application of it. Sine 6 theta and sine 4 theta, we want to look at which one of these does it match? And we see that it matches the, the very first formula. We have a sine x and a sine y. So therefore, my x is 6 theta and my y is going to be 4 theta. All I'm going to do is rewrite it by using the right-hand side of the formula. I'm going to put 6 theta in for s and 4 theta in for y, and that's really all you have to do on this. So that we have 1 half. I have cosine of x minus y, 6 theta minus 4 theta, that's x minus y. We have minus cosine 6 theta plus 4 theta. And that's it. Okay, we're going to simplify it now. And when we do, we get 1 half cosine of 2 theta minus cosine of 10 theta. Do you have to do any more of this? No, this is actually going to be your final answer. Now I know it might look tempting to try and put identities in for the double angles, but no, you don't have to actually do that in this case. All they want is actually this. This is really as far down as you can go. Another question that's asked, can I just subtract these and get cosine eight theta? No, you're not allowed to do that because these are not considered to be like terms. The two theta and the 10 theta uh, are different, so because of that, that makes them not uh, unlike terms. The only way you can combine these together is if they are both 10 theta or both 2 theta, then you definitely uh, could do that. But in this case, that would be as far as you can go. So now we've done this, let's take a look at another similar example. Okay, next example. Doing the same thing, we want to use the product of some formula to simplify this. Cosine 3 theta, cosine theta. Okay, there's cosine, cosine. Now we have to use the Second formula, once again, three, 3 theta is x and theta is going to be y. We're going to substitute into this formula. 1 half, we have cosine 3 theta minus theta. And then we have cosine 3 theta plus theta. Again, just substituting directly in from this formula here. 3 theta is x and theta is y. We're going to simplify it. Cosine 2 theta plus cosine 4 theta. These are not like terms. We can't combine these together. We don't need to put in any more identities for this. They just want you to break it down into here. So we've taken something that's a product, we've turned it into a sum. The next example we'll look at is one where we end up with a negative angle. And so that's one where I'll show you uh, some options that you have. Okay, now this example I'm going to do it slightly different than I have in my notes. I want to show you two different ways of doing it. The written notes has one method, and this is going to be uh, a different method. So first of all, in the notes, what I did was I noticed that this is sine cosine. And so I went into here and I used this formula. However, when you do this, what happens is the x is 3 theta and the y would be 5 theta. And so in this part of the formula, you get a negative angle. Now, Typically, when you see your answers written in the book, and, or if you use an online homework uh, grading system, they don't want negative angles as part of your answer. So you want to try and avoid negative angles if you can. And so in the notes, I had to use one of those even odd properties to get, the, get rid of the negative angle and turn it into a positive. Now, we can avoid doing that by just simply rewriting this. Because I noticed there's another formula for cosine sine. So the first thing I'm going to do here is I'm actually going to flip this and I'm going to do rewrite it as this. Now I'm not changing anything because we're just multiplying. You can change the order and you still get the same results. So I'm not changing the problem by doing that. Now, now purposely, the reason why I want to do it this way is because that way my x is the larger one. You always want to try and make x the larger one if you can. And we had to actually switch this. Uh, and so that way we can make use of the fourth formula instead. So the x is 5 theta and your y is going to be 3 theta. We're going to put that into the, the bottom formula now since we switched this. So again, I'm not going to use the top one and use this formula because I would have a negative angle using this to avoid uh, the negative angle. So using that bottom one, I have 1 half. I have sine of x plus y, 5 theta plus 3 theta. And then I have sine 5 theta minus 3 theta. Again, the idea here is we're 
making the x always a larger one because now when I subtract these we notice that we don't have any negative angles happening. So this is going to be sine of 8 theta and then sine of 2 theta. And this is the same answer that we have uh, in the written notes. Okay, in this case, again, these are not like terms, nothing more you can do on this. This would end up being your final answer.